Okay guys, right, I've uh, now been running the car for about a week. Um, there are absolutely no oil leaks. Um, the uh, cams are all lovely and dry, uh, so the cam seals are sealing nicely. Everything's working really, really well. So guys, just uh, as I understand it, this is a fuel metering unit. Um, and if you remove the air filter like this, you have uh, a crank, the breather uh, from the crankcase goes into the bottom here and gets sucked back into so the, the fumes from the crankcase go through and get sucked back into the airbox and into the engine. That's for emissions. And you have a, a plate here. You have a plate here that as you open the throttle here, um, you cause the engine sucks air. And as it sucks, the pressure plate, the plate here goes down. As that plate goes down, it opens the valve in here that lets more fuel in, and then the fuel distributes to all the cylinders evenly. And it's constantly running, so it doesn't pulse, it's not in synchronization with the engine. It constantly injects fuel all the time, as I understand it. Uh, even when the valves of the engine are shut, uh, i.e. the inlet valves on the engine are shut, it's still injecting fuel. So it's a constant injection process. And like I say, as you open the throttle, that goes down and more fuel gets injected into the engine. Now, the other thing is that you adjust the mixture for this. So the mix between the air and the fuel for all eight cylinders, the mixture control is just here. Uh, and you, you can, the giveaway is there's a little cutout in the air filter, just there box. And you put an Allen screw in there, I think, or it looks like, actually, no, it looks like a normal screwdriver um, down there. Uh, let me try and get another angle for you so you can see it. There's the screw there for the fuel metering on the fuel metering unit, and that adjusts the uh, mix between the air and the fuel right the way through the scale, as I understand it. Now, as you can see, mine hasn't been touched in a long time. And I go by plug colour, so I look at the colour of the plugs, and if they're a nice biscuit colour, then uh, you're happy. If they're black, then it's too rich, and if they're white, then you're too lean, and white is not good because you can burn out valves in the piston. I'm going to spray some WD on there. As you can see, I've never ever adjusted it on this car, actually, so I'm just going to put some WD on there just to let it sort of soak, and uh, if ever I have to make an, you know, an adjustment in the future, uh, then uh, it will be nice and clear. Here we have the airflow sensor safety switch, which I'll demonstrate now by turning on the ignition. Um, let's do that. Right, so with the ignition on, when I depress this, you hear the pump. Okay, so that's working. Um, and that is basically um, when the engine starts to run, that then switches the fuel on. And when the engine is not running, that shuts off so you don't hear the fuel pump. So it basically activates the fuel pump. So if I start the engine, so you see the plate drop, the plate drops, and then the fuel pump is activated. If I turn the ignition on again, if I touch it, you'll hear the fuel pump activate. <coughs> hear that? <laughs> so we know that's all working nicely. Something else that's very interesting, and this again is just an observation, having just started the engine, the system fuel pressure is now up. And this is very hard to push with your finger. You can't push it easily. And I'm assuming that that is because of the system fuel pressure that's built up from having just run. When left overnight for a long period, um, I can push that very easily. It just deflects with no problem at all. So I'm assuming that it's system fuel pressure that is keeping that plate up until the engine is running on demand. So I think that's what's happening there. I may be incorrect, but that would certainly uh, make sense to me that that's, that's exactly what's going on. I have noticed 
uh, with, uh, notice with this card. Sometimes when you put the ignition in uh, key and you turn it to second position, you do indeed get um, the fuel pump running, which is this switch here. So I think that the switch is kind of working intermittently. Sometimes it's working, sometimes it isn't. Um, because sometimes you hear the fuel pump running, sometimes, most of the time, you don't hear it running. Obviously, the fact that it is running uh, would indicate to me that, um, that it has to be an internal thing. If it was a bad connection, then it probably wouldn't run, because I'm assuming that if I disconnected that, you'd end up with no fuel pump. Um, I suppose we can test that theory uh, by disconnecting it and see what happens. Okay, guys, I've just answered my own question. Look at that. Okay, the corrosion on there. Now, you would have thought that if that was not making contact, you'd have no um, fuel pump uh, because it's a safety feature. But in fact, it's exactly the opposite to what I would have expected. Being a safety feature, you would think no connection would mean no fuel. Uh, and only a connection would make it so that you had fuel. That would it, it make it so that... If this switch failed, it would fail in a no fuel situation, but in fact it doesn't. It fails in a fuel situation, which is useful for getting home, of course, but not useful as a safety feature. So as you can see, that's very corroded. And in fact, if I turn the key now, I, you will hear the fuel pumps running. And there you go. You heard the fuel pumps running when in fact they shouldn't be because the engine is not running. So obviously clean up that contact and then hopefully we shouldn't have a repeat of that, um, that little issue. Right guys, clean the contacts and uh, packed it full of grease big time. Uh, so uh, that should keep the weather out. Since the grill for the engine is right there. So the water goes straight onto that metering unit. Okay, right guys, put it all back together. Let's check, it's all working. Right then guys, I've had a little bit of a clean up in there. Um, I've also put some grease in that uh, mixture adjuster hole um, because obviously the weather gets straight in there from the grill uh, on the engine cover. So I've put some grease in there and stopped that corroding itself solid. Um, uh, hopefully we won't have to adjust that anytime soon, but uh, that's the whole reason why it probably would seize up. Um, anyway, and as you can see, I've sort of had the air box off and just cleaned around the metering unit either side just to smarten it up a bit so um, now it's all working properly the other thing i was wondering was what actually denoted the system control pressure which i haven't got the figures for just yet but um obviously with the um uh, with the warm-up regulator i'm assuming that that controls system pressure at different temperatures so from cold to hot the system pressure i'm assuming will be different um, the overall control pressure i believe is in that if you take that out i think the valve is in there um, i'm not certain though but i think the system control pressure valve is there and that shimmed to increase or decrease the system pressure so again, any thoughts on that would be, uh, would be useful. I'd like to know that. So the next thing here is the warm-up valve. And what that does is changes the fuel pressure. Um, so when the engine's cold, it changes the fuel pressure, uh, allowing the metering unit to distribute more fuel to the cylinders. In other words, it richens the mixture, uh, as I understand it. And then obviously as it heats up, the valve uh, shuts and allow and then thereby changes the mixture to a leaner setting once the engine is hot so effectively it's like a choke and that valve works in conjunction with 
this valve over here, uh, which allows more air in. So effectively, you get a faster, a, a faster running engine as well, because you're allowing more air in and more fuel. So you end up with a faster uh, running engine when it's cold. As the engine heats up, that valve shuts and restricts the air. Uh, and this valve changes the pressure in here which then leans out the mix here, if that makes sense. And I'm sure if I've got that right, that I think is what happens. Then you have this little injector here, which is for cold start, where I think it just injects fuel into the cylinders and gives you um, a blast of uh, rich fuel for starting, initially starting on a, on, a, on a stone cold engine, basically. So obviously, people disconnect that because if you're doing like I often do where I start the car move it and then stop the car you know so I can get access to my garages um, if you keep starting it and not driving it I think you know you end up fouling the plugs which I've noticed seems to happen that I seem to foul the plugs so I've now disconnected that so it doesn't do that and I don't have any more plug fouling issues with that disconnected um, because it's not constantly, every time I turn the key from a cold engine, it's not constantly throwing in fuel into the engine that really doesn't get burnt off properly. So, and I think that's quite a common practice. I think quite a lot of people disconnect these. I now need to know what this is doing. Is it working? Is it not working? Is it behaving normally? So I'm just gonna do a quick video uh, to see, really just data gathering exercise um, so that I can better understand how this injection system works. So the first test is on this valve. Now I'm assuming that when the engine is cold, this valve will be open. And as it runs, it will shut. That's what I'm thinking. And to test this, I've taken the hose off. I'm gonna block that end. And I'm gonna feel what vacuum, obviously I'm gonna put some tape over there and I'm gonna remove the tape while the engine's running and just put my finger there and feel the suction and then hopefully feel the suction go away as the engine gets hot. So that's the first thing to do. Obviously, um, uh, you know, the engine will run lean if it's left like that, but it's just, again, a test to see what we can uh, determine and is that valve operating normally even. Now you should see how easily this engine starts when cold without any of that uh, injector, without this connected over here. Um, so um, let's see what effect various things have. I'm obviously going to take this up because that really upsets it. And there's a very strong vacuum coming from there. So that's drawing air really nicely. What I'm going to do is just take the end of that up to stop that drawing air and upsetting it um, and uh, just feel when that vacuum dies off so for st starting purposes we'll just block that up <laughs> So we'll just wait for that vacuum to go away. I don't know how long that's going to take. As I understand it, um, this valve as I understand it, this valve should actually start to shut as it gets hot. Now whether that's a heat sink thing, because it's attached to the, the tank, the water tank here, so whether it's to do with heat, or I suspect not, because it does have an electrical connection. It has an electrical connection at the other end. 
I believe that probably is, that obviously that's the thing that's operating the valve. So that's getting a signal from somewhere that then shuts the valve. But again, you have to excuse my ignorance regarding this system because fuel injection is uh, pretty new to me. Or this type of jetronic injection. Um, doesn't seem to suffer by not, you know, by having this pipe blocked off. And I suspect that's what a lot of people do. I'm sure I read somewhere that people don't have this connected. doesn't seem to feel as strong now. It feels like the valve is shutting. Yeah. Yeah, definitely feels like it's shutting. Hardly any suction there now. Yeah. I'd say that valve is nearly shut. There's just a little bit of suction there. Whereas before it sucked my thumb quite quickly, now there's nothing. And as you can hear, it's not affecting the engine. That is the smallest of suction, so it's probably just leaking very, very slightly. Yeah, that's it. That shut. Yeah, nothing there. Well, at least we know that's working anyway. I seem to read somewhere that it it shuts off after a couple of minutes. So, and that certainly seems to be doing that all right. So, like I say, it's more of a data gathering exercise. This. Right guys, obviously because I've sort of tackled every uh, major job on this car now, um, it's, I feel as though it's like all pretty much done. Um, it now, you know, you start to now mess around with the finer points. I mean, I haven't messed around with the tuning or anything on this because the car's been working absolutely fine, no problem at all. So you feel as though, you know, leave it alone, it's all okay. But now I've done all the major jobs on it, I do really want to get to know the car a bit better. Uh, the injection system especially and make sure that it is running exactly as it should be and just to really learn about how the injection system should behave and how um, it is behaving obviously not having another car to compare it to it's always difficult um, but um, already I've found the source of my occasionally running fuel pump which has always baffled me um, um, but uh, now I found it's it's down to that, so that's that's interesting. Um, and obviously you learn things all the time. This is sort of a little bit of a preventative thing, you know, by looking at how this um, metering unit is when it's not running, and then when it's running and how it responds normally. If something goes wrong, then I can refer back to this video um, and make sure that uh, I get it sort of set up properly. So, um, yes, it's uh, getting to know your fuel injection, I think, uh, is what I shall call this video. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for watching.